Hi kids, it's me, Miss Booksy here at Cool School. Don't you guys just love your parents? Let's revisit all our awesome parent adventures here at Cool School. And tell me in the comments below what's your favorite thing to do with your parents. Once upon a time, there was a king and queen. There they are right now. Hello. Hello. They were really good at their job. They took care of their people. They listened to the people of their kingdom. Sure, I agree that every Friday shall be Pizza Friday. Yay! Yay. Pizza. pizza! Pizza! They made the tough decisions. Hmm, should everyone in the kingdom have off from work for trampoline day? Well, it does sound like fun for everyone. Okay, I declare tomorrow everyone has the day off. Jump away! Yay! And most importantly, they were kind. No, no, I insist. After you. Oh my, thank you, your majesty. So it's no surprise that they were also really great parents. And their daughters, AKA princesses, were also pretty awesome. The youngest daughter named Tanya was really special. Some might even say enchanting. In fact, the sun even marveled when it shone on her face. Oh my, you're marvelous. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> But Princess Tanya was not just into jewels, fancy dresses, and tea parties, <laughs> although those things were all pretty cool too. Yeah, I have lots of hopes and dreams, and I really love, love, love soccer, or some might say football. Who am I kidding? I don't play soccer in this dress. That's better. Princess Tanya was really good at soccer. She played on her kingdom's team. They were the Golden Warriors, and they won a lot of games, and sometimes lost, but always had fun. One day at her game. Okay guys, this is for the championship. You can do it. Work together. Go, Go Golden Warriors. Warriors. Come on, princess. This is your chance. For the winning goal, you can do it. No! I really need to work on my skills. So that's what she did. I practiced day in and day out. Of course, as long as I finish my chores. Yeah, princesses do chores too. <laughs> I practiced my kicking. I practiced my blocking. I practiced my dramatic falling on the ground pretending I'm injured. I practiced my victory dancing. I practiced until I was so tired. Make sure you rest and then keep practicing. You know what they say, practice makes. Perfect, I know, practice makes perfect. No, I was going to say practice makes you a hard worker. It's not about being perfect. It's important to work hard when you're going for your dreams. Thanks, Mom. You're so wise. <laughs> well, I mean, I used to be quite the athlete in my day. Four? Yeah, Mom. You've told us just a few times how good you were. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go play some more. See ya! Princess Tanya went for a walk through the forest near the castle. She had her special golden ball with her. Mom said I should rest, and my most favorite place to chill out is by the linden tree. There's this relaxing well. Sometimes I even make wishes on the well. Hey, Princess Tanya, what's up? Seen any rainbows recently? No, actually, I haven't. I've been kind of busy. <laughs> Here, cat. Oops, sorry. The whole no legs thingy makes playing soccer tricky. That's okay. You're good at a lot of other things. Aw, oh, shucks. And you are really good at lots of stuff too, princess. Like, obviously, you're a soccer star. I'm doing my best. Watch this. Uh-oh, it's about to fall in. No, no! Oh, man. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, my golden ball. Princess Tanya lost her golden ball in the well. <laughs> son tried his best to help. Hey, princess, here you go. Have some me shine. Get it? Me shine instead of sunshine? It's no use, Mr. Sun. My ball is gone forever. Well, maybe not forever. Cheer up. How can I cheer up when my most favorite thing in all the land is gone, lost, vanished? This is very sad. 
maybe a little dramatic, but... <laughs> Who? Me? Dramatic? <gasps> what? Sorry, forget I said anything. I'm just gonna go home. Princess Tanya had gone back to the castle <laughs> with no ball in hand. That afternoon, when it was tea time, Princess Tanya was sitting with her sisters and her mom. She was not her usual happy self. They could see something was wrong. Princess Tanya, why the long face? Yeah, you're eating your favorite chocolate biscuits. You should be so happy. But I'm not happy. I'm way upset, you guys. Uh, yeah, we can tell. What gives? I lost my most favorite golden ball. It fell in the well when I was practicing. And now what will I do? And how will I get serious skills if I don't have it? And it was my good luck charm. And I feel like I've lost a part of my soul. And I can't stop crying in the middle of everything. Even when I do my chores, it's like, here I am sweeping, but I'm so sad. Sweep, sweep, wah. And, and sweet Tota. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Sorry. Now, why don't you go back to the well and see if you can get it back? Okay, I'll try. So the princess went back to the well by the linden tree. And of course, when she got there, no ball was in sight. She started crying again. Why? Why? <laughs> Uh-oh, here we go again. I'm sorry, Mr. Sun. And I'm sorry I was so rude to you yesterday. I just feel so sad. I get it. <laughs> Why are you crying? Mr. Sun, I just told you. That wasn't me. Huh? Then whose voice was that? Hello? It's me. Ah! You're, you're, you're talking and you're a frog. You're a talking frog. Uh, I mean, you were just talking to the sun, so... Right. True. <clears throat> Anyways... So why are you so sad? I could hear your cries from miles away. Well, yesterday my most favorite golden soccer ball fell into the well when I was trying to show the sun some really cool tricks. Hmm. That does sound like a problem. It is. And now I don't know what to do. <laughs> hmm. I bet I could help. That's sweet, but I don't really know how a tiny talking frog is going to be able to get me a new golden ball. No, I mean, I could go fetch your ball for you. Really? Yeah, I'm a really good swimmer. And you look like you're a good person. Who needs a helping hand? Poor flipper. What, what would you call this? Um, I'm not sure. So are you going to get my ball or not? Absolutely. Great, thanks. Okay, but what do I get in return? There's always a catch. So? Well, that is like my most favorite thing of all the things I have. So you can have my clothes, my pearls, my precious stones, even my golden crown. Thanks, but I don't need all that fancy stuff. Well, then what can I offer you? Friendship. I don't have any friends. Huh? You know, this royal forest, this wishing well, these woods, they all get pretty lonely. I'd love to have a new friend. We could do lots of cool stuff together. Um... If you say yes, I'll jump in and get your ball right now. Well... I'm not quite sure what kind of companionship a frog can offer. They're kind of slimy. And don't they usually live in water? But I'm really desperate here. So... Okay, you got yourself a deal. Deal. Ew. I mean, thanks. Princess Tanya watched as the frog took a running start and leapt into the well. And she waited, and waited, and waited. Then suddenly, the frog emerged to the surface of the water with a loud gasp of air. Got it. Whoa, I'm your hero. Um, that is not my ball. My ball is golden colored and beautiful and so special to me. Are you sure? You don't want to take a closer look? Maybe it's yours, but just got dirty. Ah! Ew! OMG, what was that? Sorry. Oh, just a fish. Well, thank you so much for trying, Mr. Frog. Guess it's no use. My ball's gone forever. I guess I'll just move out of the castle and change my name and go start a little surf shop on the beach. Um, that sounds like a slight overreaction. Oh, maybe I am overreacting, but what am I gonna do? Princess Tanya was sure she would never see her ball ever again. Wow, it's gone forever. I'll never get it back. Hey, 
Don't cry. If you start crying, then I'm gonna start crying. And then... Let me try one more time, beautiful princess. If I can find it, you'll be my friend, right? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Thank you. The frog dove down to the bottom of the well again to find the ball. Aha! You said golden soccer ball, yeah? I also see a golden football, a golden baseball, a golden hockey puck. Do you want those too? Oh, just the soccer ball is fine, thanks! You sure? So many cool things down here. Just the ball, thank you! Suddenly, there it was. Oh, thank you, thank you! I'm so happy I can kiss, um, give you a nice nod of thanks. <laughs> see ya, frog dude! Where are you going? You promised we'd be friends. You gave me a high five. But Princess Tanya was so excited, she forgot about her deal with the frog. She dribbled it all the way home. Wait for me. You're running too fast. I can't keep up. Oh man, I should start working out. Yay, my ball. Princess. The frog chased after Princess Tanya, but soon she was out of sight. Still, the frog wasn't gonna give up. All he wanted was to be her friend. Seriously, that's the thanks I get. Better start heading towards the castle. This might take a while. Meanwhile, Princess Tanya had already made it back to the castle. And she shoots, she scores! Tanya dear, please don't kick your soccer ball at the house. Oh, sorry mom, <laughs> I'll just practice my footwork. That night, Princess Tanya peacefully went to sleep and she dreamt of the most magical things. And there she goes, ladies and gentlemen. She's off, she's faster than a rocket ship. I'm gonna make the winning goal. She's doing it, folks. She's really doing it. Watch out, here I... Huh? Hi. Wait a minute. Princess Tanya woke up from her dream a little confused, but in a split second, she was fine again. She had her ball and it was all good. She was so glad she could sing. Tra la 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 la. I don't know the words to this song. It's a good day to be alive <laughs> and maybe do some art projects and of course, play soccer. Oops, I don't wanna be late for breakfast. The king, queen, and princess were all eating a big wonderful breakfast. Fruit salad, sparkling cider, French toast with strawberries, sprinkles, and whipped cream. Princess Tanya's favorite. Mmm, this is so yummy. I agree. La 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 la. I love sprinkles and whipped cream and all these yummy things. Tra la 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 la. La 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 la. <laughs> you seem happy today. I got my golden soccer ball back. Now I can practice forever and ever. Congratulations! How'd you get it back? Um, well, you see, I am, um, I don't remember, I think. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. I'll get it! Princess Tanya excitedly ran to the door as fast as she could. As she opened the door, she looked around but couldn't see anybody. When she looked down... Hi, best friend! It was the frog. Princess Tanya screamed and slammed the door shut. What is it, Dia? N nothing. Let me see. She's right. There's nothing there. Ew, gross. What's all the commotion? What's out there? Is it a giant? So the frog was outside the door. All the princesses had shrieked about seeing him at their house but the king wanted to know what was going on. What's all the screaming? It's so early in the morning. I haven't even finished my coffee for all this excitement. There's a, a thing outside. If it's not a giant, then is it a monster? OMG, no, dad, it's a frog. A giant frog? Oh, no, dad, it's just a regular sized frog. You really do need to drink some coffee. Oh, that's a relief. I met a giant frog once. He was very rude. No table manners at all. He did keep the flies away, though. More ice cream sundaes. You didn't even say please. Please give me ice cream sundaes. That's not much better. I don't like your tone. Mm, never mind, I'm full. Ugh, so rude. Well, anyways, Tanya, what does the frog want from you? 
Well, it's an interesting story. Do you remember when I lost my favorite golden ball? Of course we remember. That happened literally yesterday. I asked you about it like a minute ago. So when I went to the well, that frog offered to help me get my ball back. And he did. But I also made a promise. <gasps> a promise? To a frog that talks? My queen, a talking frog is the least of our worries now. Our daughter made a promise. Yeah, and I promised him that we could be friends, but I'm not sure how I feel about that now. What do you mean? Well, he's a frog. We're so different. What would we even do together? I can't have afternoon tea with him or play soccer or bake cookies. He doesn't even have hands or feet, just like these web thingies. Outside the door, the frog wondered if saying something more poetic might get the royal family to open the door. Youngest daughter of the king, open up the door for me. Don't you know what yesterday you said to me down by the well? Youngest daughter of the king, open up the door for me. Hello. I tried to rhyme. I thought it was sublime. Oh, there I go again. I didn't even mean to. Now I'm feeling blue. Ah, I can't stop. Wow, that frog is quite poetic. How can you deny such a well-spoken creature? Your mother is right, my dear daughter. You made a promise, and we are a family of promise keepers. I honestly didn't think that a frog could live outside the water. Of course they can. Frogs are amphibians. You should have paid more attention in school. I mean, it must have taken him ages to get here. He is pretty tiny. Maybe it's because your friendship really matters to him. Hmm, I just never saw myself being much of a frog person. <laughs> you must respect all living creatures in our kingdom. This frog did something very kind for you from the bottom of his little froggy heart. And in this royal kingdom, being kind is very important. Plus, I'm sure that the frog hops very high. He'd be a great buddy on trampoline day. That's true. You know we like you to make good choices, so it's up to you. What do you think would be the right thing to do? Fine, I guess I'll be friends with the frog. I never thought I would say something like that out loud. Give me a hug, new best friend. Ah! Whoa, a talking frog. Oh, please, sister. You talk to your pet rabbit all the time. What? How did you know that? Um, your pet rabbit talks to us too. She told us you snore really loud and drool in your sleep. Do not. Do too. Mom. Um, hello. Can I get a hand here? Oh, sorry, Tanya. Um, come here, little frog. Why don't you give Tanya a little space? Excuse me. I may look little, but I'm not a baby. I'm 30 years old. 30? Whoa, you're basically a grown-up. Yeah, a real grown-up. Like, I used to have a job doing royal... Wait, never mind. Forget I said anything. Doing what? What, what were you going to say? Um, nothing. Never mind. We are brand new friends. We don't need to be spelling out secrets right away, right? Huh? Okay, weird. Hey, do you think there's something fishy with that frog? Fishy? I thought he was a frog. Now I'm all confused. No, ugh. Fishy, like hiding something? Like, he said he had a job before. I didn't know frogs could work. I mean, there's no possible way he's like something other than a frog, right? Like a disguise. <laughs> nah. nah. The princesses had been discussing their impression of their new friend. Maybe there is something more to this frog guy than meets the eye. Ooh, like something magical? You know I love magic. Ahem, dear daughters, young friend, would you care to join us at the table? We, oui. if this is your dad and you're a princess, then that means he's the king. Cool, good day, your highness. It's so nice to meet you, let's eat. Mr. Frog, we can pull up a chair for you, or a lily pad, or a chair made out of lily pads. I'm sure we have one lying around somewhere. Yeah, we make furniture out of leaves all the time. We made a lava lamp out of leaves. Cool. Now let's make a new bunny friend for Rabbit. Not sure that's a good idea. Rabbit keeps eating the friends we make him. Aw, he really doesn't understand. Maybe we should stop making Rabbit new friends out of his food. 
Thank you for your hospitality. I would be most delighted if we could share, Princess Tanya. I just love sharing food with friends. I agree. The Queen and I share chocolate chip cookies at tea time every day. Um, sure. Let me give you a lift. So, Mr. Froggy, uh, is it all right if I call you Mr. Froggy? Well, my name is Prince. I mean, uh, Prince. Like in Paw Prince. Definitely not Royal Prince or anything like that. Yeah, you can call me Paw Prince. Well, we are quite happy to have you here, Paw Prince. That's an interesting name. Well, it's not like he would change the name his parents gave him. That would take a lot of paperwork. Didn't he mention before that he had a royal job? I suppose we'll just need to get to know him more. Tell us, poor Prince, is there anything you'd like to eat? I would be most happy to share anything that Princess Tanya is having. Um, sure. Take whatever you'd like. Ooh, those sprinkles look yummy. I, I love, love sprinkles. sprinkles. <laughs> um, oh yeah, uh, that's cool. <laughs> but actually, would it be alright if we added some cinnamon to the whipped cream? I love cinnamon. It reminds me of my grandma's cookies. Surely. Tonya, dear, can you ask the royal chef to make some special whipped cream with cinnamon in it? Okay. Princess Tanya knew she had to try her best to keep her promise. So she went to the kitchen to ask the chef to make a special meal for her new froggy friend. Hello? Chef Flo? Arr, he may enter. Hi, Chef Flo. Thanks for putting all the extra sprinkles in the breakfast today. <laughs> Aye, you're welcome, my lady. What can I do for you? We have a guest for breakfast, and, well, he wants something special. I'm always glad to make special food for special guests. What would your new friend like? He wants cinnamon in the whipped cream. Is your new friend a frog, matey? Yes, how did you know? Oh, frogs are known to love cinnamon. Oh, cool. But I don't know if I would call him my friend. Why is that, Princess Tanya? Well, he is a frog, and I'm a human, so I don't know how I'm going to make this work. You know, when I used to work on the ships, going back and forth to the old country, I met every type of creature you can imagine. I befriended mermaids. Come swim with us, Flo. I befriended the waves. Arr! Can you take us to the North Pole? Sure! Make sure you wear a scarf! It's cold up there! Hold on tight! Whoa! I befriended fish? I don't understand you, but I'm sure you're nice! One day, there was a huge storm! Me and the crew were afraid our ship would sink, or worse! Lead us to the lands of the dragons! Wait, dragons? That actually sounds pretty cool. You're right, dragons are awesome! Anyway, back to the story. Just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, a tornado approached! The tornado! We're doomed! The tornado was scary! It could have ripped our boat to shreds! But then I thought about my kindness rule. So Chef Flo had been telling Princess Tanya about her kindness rule. My kindness rule. Your kindness rule? Yes, my kindness rule. Always be kind. Even if it's a little scary or difficult, it's cool to be kind. Yeah, you've told me that once or twice before. I've known you for a long time, Princess, and you've always been very accepting, which is a very princessly thing to be. Aw, thanks. <laughs> Now back to the story. Well, I thought maybe if we were kind to the tornado, it would not hurt us. Hi, tornado. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm not great. I have no friends. Everyone is afraid of me. That must be so tough. Nobody takes time to get to know me. I just wish I had someone to talk to. Well, be your friend, Tornado? You're not afraid of me? Of course not. Would you like some stew? I would love some. Hey, 
it seems like you're in a real jam with this storm. How about I use my wind to take you someplace safe? Oh, like the beach? Please tell me the beach. I really, 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 really want to go to the beach. I love making sandcastles, getting a suntan, drinking coconut water right from the coconut. Sure, the beach it is. That's awesome. Thank you, Tornado. Please call me Stanley. The tornado picked up our ship and brought us safely to shore. To this day, me and Stanley have tea once a month. You see, Princess Tanya, just by taking a little extra time to talk to someone who is different than me, not only saved us from a really bad disaster, but I also made a new friend. Sometimes you can make a friend in the most unexpected places. Gee, thanks, Chef Flo. That's really nice to hear. I mean, maybe the frog will turn out to be one of the greatest friends I've ever had. Meanwhile, back at the table, Paw Prince the Frog was cracking the royal family up with hilarious wildlife jokes. So I says to the guy, those aren't golf balls, they're lizard eggs. <laughs> Man, oh man, oh, I haven't laughed like this in ages. <laughs> you are something else, Mr. Prince. Now, tell me more about that volunteer work you've been doing. Oh, well, we help people in the kingdom who need it. Whipped cream with cinnamon coming through. Sweet, literally. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, that looks really good. And you're right, it smells just like my grandma's cookies too. See, we have that in common. Yeah, I guess you're right. Princess, I would be most delighted if you shared this special treat with me. Sure. <laughs> That's yummers. Ooh, I want to try. Me too. Well, I wouldn't mind a little smackerel of whipped cream. We can all share. So the whole royal family and the frog enjoyed sharing the frog's whipped cream and other treats too. They laughed and got to know each other more. When breakfast was over, Princess Tanya knew what she had to do. So, uh, Paw Prince, you wanna stay and hang out? I have a soccer ball with your name on it. Oh, not literally your name, it's gold. Remember the gold soccer ball that you rescued for me? Yeah, I know, I know. Let's go. We're coming, We're coming too. too. Hey, Paw Prince, think fast. Ha, ah, nice kick, Princess. The princesses and the frog had a lovely day. Not only did they play soccer, but they made necklaces out of real flowers. They went for a walk in the kingdom and tried fresh bread from the baker. They listened to some musicians playing in the town square. This has been the best day ever. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Today has been awesome. See? It's cool to make new friends and make new memories. You want to come back to the castle? It's family game night. Tonight is my pick, and I love Twister. You had me at family game night. I'm in. Hat night after dessert, of course. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> it was finally time for family game night. They played like a million rounds of Twister. Right foot red. <laughs> my, oh my. You are so good at this game. Yeah, well, frogs have sticky toes, so Twister is pretty much my jam. One more round? Yes, left hand yellow. My, my favorite, favorite color. color. Your favorite color is yellow? OMG, your favorite color is yellow too? See, BFFs for life, I knew it. It was true. The more Tanya and Paw Prince spent time together, the more they realized they really did enjoy each other's company and had a lot in common. Left foot green. Frog, you win again. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I was good at Twister. Next time we'll play chess. After a fun game of Twister, Tanya and Paw Prince the Frog got ready for bed. They got into their PJs, they brushed their teeth, and combed their hair. Even though it was almost bedtime, Princess Tanya didn't want the day to end. She was having so much fun with her new frog friend. I know. How about we paint our fingernails? I'd love to, but I don't actually have nails. That's okay. We can do face masks instead. This will exfoliate your pores. 
Thank you. Uh, sorry I'm so slimy. It's kind of a frog thing. Tony dear, time for bed. No staying up too late. You have a soccer game tomorrow. Okay, but where should Paw Prince sleep? I'm happy to sleep on the floor, or a wet rag if you have one. Nonsense! Only the best spa guests. Wait, I have an idea. And with that, Princess Tanya took the frog to the pool room. You could sleep in this. It's super comfy. Thank you so much, Princess Tanya. I really had a nice day. Me too. And thank you again for bringing my golden ball back. You're welcome. You must really love that ball if you were willing to go through all this trouble just to get it back. Yes, I do love my very special golden ball. We go way back. Ooh, I love stories. Tell me more. <laughs> sure. Once upon a time. I mean, a few years ago, when I was much younger. I never liked the same toys as my sisters. My family would give me dolls and super fancy things for my birthday, but I wasn't super into them. What do I do with this? I tried other things like painting, reading fairy tales, and even go-karting. This traffic is terrible. But nothing excited me. I wanted to do something where I could move around and play with other kids. One weekend, my grandma and grandpa visited. They used to be king and queen before my mom and dad. Queen grandma, king grandpa. Good morning, Tanya. You've gotten so tall. We're going to have so much fun today. Yes. And we did. Grandpa helped me with arts and crafts, and Grandma drank tea. It's so nice outside today. I wish we could do something fun in the sun. Yeah, play fun games outside. I have an idea. Have you heard of soccer? Huh? What's that? It's a game where you run and kick a ball with your feet. In some places, they call it football. I want to try. So me and Queen Grandma played soccer for hours. I learned how to dribble, shoot, and score. You did an amazing job, Tanya dear. Here, I have a present for you. A present? I love presents. Wow, cool. Thank you, Queen Grandma. I can't wait to play with it. Hey, pass it to me. Okay. I don't see my Queen Grandma and King Grandpa anymore, but I still have the ball and I play with it every day. And every time I play soccer, I think of my grandma. Oh. <laughs> oh no, why are you sad? I'm not sad, I'm happy. That was a very nice story. It must be so great to have people in your life who are so kind. You are very lucky. You're right. <laughs> anyway, good night, Paw Prince. Good night, princess. That night, after Princess Tanya fell asleep, she had a very strange dream. So Princess Tanya was having a really crazy dream. Wow, Paw Prince, you're really good at soccer. <laughs> yes, we should be teammates for life. Do you like that idea? I do. That sounds fun. I do too. Queen Grandma, is that really you? Yes, sweet Tanya. I am so proud of you. I was just telling my new friend about you and all the good times we had together. I miss those times. Me too, Tanya. Me and Paw Prince are going to be teammates for life. I approve. And I now pronounce you goalie and center forward. And then Princess Tanya woke up in a flash. Whoa. What a strange dream. I wonder what it means. <sighs> Meanwhile, Paw Prince the Frog was having his own dilemma. He woke up before anyone else in the castle and went to see his friend, Mr. Sun. So the thing is, son, time is running out. What do you mean? Like the spell? It's about to run out. Wait, did he just say spell? As in hocus pocus, abracadabra, alakazam? See, the sisters knew there was something different about this frog. Yeah, the spell that the witch put on me a long time ago that turned me from a prince into a frog for 10 years. Ooh, that spell, go on. But once I turn back into a prince, what if things change between me and Tanya? What do you mean? Like, we've become such good friends. I, I don't want to ruin a good thing. Well, I think Princess Tanya will understand. And... 
I don't want Tanya to only like me because I'm a prince. I'm more than just royalty. I want her to like me for me. Tanya has a good heart. She will like you no matter what you look like. So, Paw Prince, wait a minute, I just got that. Paw Prince, like Prince, cause he's a royal prince? Whoa, this story is so crazy. Anyway, Paw Prince walked back to the castle and suddenly, Whoa, 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 wow! Uh oh, it's happening. The 10 year spell is over. And there he was, the royal frog prince. The spell was broken. Whoa, I look good. I gotta get back to the castle before everyone wakes up. Oh! Ouch! But all this ruckus was so loud that it woke up Tanya and she came to the door to see if her friend the frog was okay. But she was in for a surprise. Oh, Paw Prince? I heard a... Uh... Hey! What? What the? Who are you? You, you, you better stand back, mister! Yeah, 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 yeah! Tanya? Tanya! Hey! How do you know my name? Are you a spy? No, Tanya, I know I look a little different, but it's me. You? You, you, who, you're some sort of intruder in my house? I'm gonna call the cops in 30 seconds if you don't tell me what's going on here. It's me, Paw Prince. <gasps> Paw Prince? Did you eat Paw Prince and now he's talking to me from inside your belly? Open your mouth, let me see. I'll save you, Paw Prince. No, I'm actual Paw Prince. I'm not a frog anymore. So the prince explained the whole story to Princess Tanya. He told her about the spell and also apologized about hiding his true identity from her. This is crazy. But I mean, deep down you are you no matter what. So you're saying we can still be friends? Of course. So friend, do you want to come to my soccer game this afternoon? Yes, I'd love that. Princess Tanya was playing really well at her game that day. The prince watched her and saw how passionate she was about soccer and how happy she seemed. He even loved her silly victory dance after she scored a goal. She was killing it. Then he realized something. I really like Princess Tanya and not just because she's a princess, but she is so kind, she's chasing her dreams, and she's a good friend. I think I love... Dude, who are you talking to? Er, uh, I was just practicing my poetry reciting. Roses are red, violets are blue. I really like picnics and ponies, and, uh, a stew. Uh, I'm, I'm working on it. Um, okay, you're acting a little weird. No, I just really like soccer. Oh, yeah, me too. I mean, duh. And now that you're more bigger, we can finally play together. So as you guys can tell, the prince was starting to have feelings for the princess, but he wasn't sure he was ready to tell her yet. Yeah, we are still getting to know each other. I just gotta keep it cool. Uh, yeah, so we should do something or whatever. We could ride motorcycles. Whee! We could be cool and go to a concert. We could visit a cool ice sculpture. We could be casual and just like chill. What? You've never said that you like those things. Seriously, why are you acting so weird and not like yourself? Uh-oh, guys. What am I gonna do? Do I tell her? Hi, guys. It's me, Little Red. And I'm here to... I thought you said we're reading The Three Little Pigs. Yes, I know. But we have our special friend, Little Red, helping us tell the story. Okay, let's get back to it. So as I was saying, I'm Little Red and I have such an epic story to tell you guys. There once was a family of pigs. Family meeting! Coming, Coming on. on! But first, mud milkshakes? Yeah. Yes! I want chocolate! Please, can I have the mint chip? And I'll have a worm and crickets milkshake. Gross! Gross! What? I'm unique, okay? Okay, Piggies, we wanted to talk to you guys today because we are so happy that you are growing into big, strong pigs and we have loved the past 32 years of raising you and having you live in our house and doing your laundry and you not paying rent. But we feel the time. You gotta move out. <gasps> Okay, we knew you wouldn't like this, but I didn't think you would take it this hard. Sorry, you're all grown up now. Bye. Harsh. 
You'll need to get jobs so you can pay for supplies to build your own houses. When I was your age, I had to walk 52 miles in the snow to my first job. Dad, we already heard this story a million times. Well, it's gonna be hard work for you guys, but we believe in you. My little piggies are all grown up. Don't worry, Mom, we got this. Secret sibling cheer? One pig, two pig, three pigs a dollar. All for the family, stand up and holler. And just when the three little pigs were amping themselves up to go out and look for jobs, there was a knock on the door. Who are you? Hey, don't be rude. Hello, who might you be, girl covered in red? I'm Little Red. Mm, makes sense. I was wandering through these woods to get to my grandma's house. See, she's sick with a cold and I wanted to go cheer her up. <laughs> this story sounds so familiar, like a fairy tale my grandma read me when I was a little piglet. Anyways, I'm super exhausted and kind of just bored from walking around so long, so do you think I could chill with you guys for a bit? Well, we were just gonna go to downtown. We're getting jobs and moving on up. You could come with us. That sounds like an adventure. I'm sure Grandma will be fine for a little while longer. <laughs> Yay! Yay! But before you go, would you like a slug shake? Um, I'm afraid to ask what that is, so no thank you. So Little Red and the three pigs went off to the town. They had fun and got to know each other. They played guessing games. Can you guess my favorite color? Hmm, that's easy. Red? Yellow, actually. <laughs> Can you guess my favorite snack? Bacon. <gasps> Just kidding, sorry. <laughs> they smelled the flowers. They made new friends. They stopped for a bite to eat. They ran around in circles. They basically did everything except find new jobs. This has been fun and all guys, but we should really find somewhere that's hiring. But finding a job is so hard. <laughs> if only there was a place that we could go that helped pigs get jobs. If only it was that easy. Um, guys, kind of like the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs? Yeah, let's go. So what brings you to us, the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get the jobs? Well, isn't it kind of obvious? What kind of jobs do you have available? Oh, many things. Cupcake makers, we need builders, painters, molecular biologists. Huh? We need the gingerbread decorators, truck drivers, teachers, professional nappers. Ooh, I want that one. Oh, I am so sorry, but none of these jobs are available right now. Oh. oh. Well, we need something. Our mom and dad are going to be super mad at us. Well, why don't you tell us what the pigs can do immediately? Yes, I have just the thing. Hey, you look familiar. Who, me? So you were saying that you had just the right jobs for these pigs? Yes, I have just the thing that will bring home the bacon. What? <gasps> oh, <clears throat> no offense, just a figure of a speech. I have the perfect job for you three. There's an opening at the candy factory. Ooh. Oh. You can start today. Here, sign these papers. What do they say? Don't worry about it. The pigs will have the best jobs in town. Hmm. I hope I can taste test candy. I hope I can swim in a candy pool. I just hope we can make some money soon so we can buy building supplies. You guys are going to do great. So the three pigs went to the first day of their job. Little Red followed along for support. They were nervous and excited. It took the pigs a little getting used to. I mean, they never worked a day in their life. They made mistakes. They were sometimes late. They sometimes said the wrong thing. Yeah, boss, I literally didn't work today. All I did was eat candy. Uh, oops. Sometimes they ate way too many pieces of candy and got belly aches. But after a while, they saved up enough money to build their own houses. So Little Red went with the first pig to the store. So what do you think you need to build a strong house? Hmm. I want something quick, because I'd rather be doing anything else besides building. How about this? No way! One drop of rain and the paper will disintegrate! Marshmallows? No. Slime? No! Okay, fine. Straw it is. Oh, I don't think straw is gonna be super strong. Too bad, I'm bored. Let's go. <sighs> Hamon! I don't know about this. Oh, did I tell you his name is Hamon? So Little Red helped Hamon build his house of straw. It looked okay, but Little Red knew it probably wasn't a very strong house. Wow! <laughs> You did it! It looks... nice. Well, let's see how this goes. 
I am so tired, I need a nap. While Hamon napped, Little Red called her grandma to check on how she was feeling. Hey grandma, sup girl, how you feeling? Oh Red, I am so happy to hear your voice. I hope you don't mind, but I might be a little late because I'm helping some friends. Of course, you are such a good friend. You rest and drink some tea grandma and I'll be there soon. Love you, bye. Suddenly there was a loud noise coming from outside. It sounded like an engine of some sort. Little Red ran to the window to see what was happening. Oh, little pig, little pig. It's that interviewer guy. He really looks familiar. The sound of the leaf blower woke Hamon up from his slumber. What? What's happening? Where am I? Is this my house? Yeah, dude, this is your house that you built. Remember? But that guy from the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs is outside. He looks a little mad. We're a little excited. I'm not really sure. Little pig, let me in, let me in. I don't want to let him in. I have morning breath and this place is a mess. Sorry, you can't come in. Yeah, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Like seriously, this thing is hairy. I need to shave before I see anyone. It's like one little hair. Whatever. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. That escalated quickly. Why would he do that? My house! I worked so moderately hard on that. What are we gonna do? And where did that guy go? But the wolf was nowhere to be found. Come on, let's go to my brother's house. We can crash with him. Oh man, I really hope he chose something stronger to build his house with. I just knew straw was not a good plan. So Little Red and Hamon were running to their brother's house when suddenly they got a call from Mom Pig. Oh, hello, my sweet darling. I miss you so much. How is it going over there? Is everything okay? Eh, what do I say? I don't want her to know about the whole house getting destroyed, thingy. Just be honest. I'm gonna tell her that I'm just going to visit my brother, Hamilton. It's always better to tell the truth. Um, hi, Mom. Doing great. Out for a jog with Little Red. We're going to see Hamilton now. Oh, how nice. <laughs> I only miss you a tiny bit. Gotta go, Ma. We're, uh, doing some stretches. We're almost there. I can see him right over there. Hamilton was just getting home from work. Hey, dude, we have a big problem. Yeah, the creepy guy from that place blew my entire house down. How could he do that? It seems like he'd need a lot of air. Like, like... <sighs> <coughs> He had a leaf blower. I don't know what his deal is, but can we crash with you? Well, I haven't actually finished building my house. Yeah, it looks like it needs a bit of work. What did you use to make it? Uh, I just found a bunch of sticks lying around in the forest. Why? What did you do with all your money? I I'm not going to tell you I spent it all on gummy bears and comic books, but... You spent all your money on gummy bears and comic books? Let's just fix this thing, okay? We'll help, I guess. If it means we can stay, fine. So the three of them tried to finish the house of sticks. Just like straw, the sticks were not very strong. So they kept having to fix little parts of the broken house. They tried tape. They used glue. They even tried using chewing gum as adhesive. When they were done, the house looked a little crazy. I guess you could call it rustic. Now that we have so much extra time, since we're not doing annoying things like building a house, let's have some fun. Party, party, party. Yeah, let's play games. Let's eat. And my favorite, let's dance. The two pigs and Little Red played and danced and enjoyed themselves until they realized they were almost going to be late for work. Again. <laughs> Uh, that was a good joke, Hamilton. Whoa, guys, we gotta go. Hopefully your sister Porchetta gets there in time too. But what they didn't realize was that Porchetta was already at work. She had been working overtime so that she could save up lots of extra money to build a strong house. So when the others got to the candy factory, they were surprised to see her. Why are you working so hard? There's so many better things to do besides work. Ugh. 
Yeah, Porchetta, you're being so weird. All you're doing is working and not even having fun. Lame. Well, guys, it's important to do your job well. And it's good to take your time. I don't want to rush my house building. Otherwise, something bad could happen to it. Bad? Like, I don't know, maybe the house being blown down or something? What? Nothing. Nothing. All right, all right. Let's just do our job so we can go home. So all the pigs and Little Red worked all day. They taste tested candy. They fixed broken machines. They separated sprinkles by color. They took a lunch break. They helped lift heavy chocolate bars. They took a nap break. At the end of the day, everyone was super tired and super ready to go home. Hamon and Hamilton said their goodbyes to poor Chetta. I'm going to stay and work a little bit more. Whatever. Bye. But while they were at work, the Big Bad Wolf paid a visit to Hamilton's stick house and blew the thing down with a huge fan. And remember, the pigs in Little Red didn't realize it was the Big Bad Wolf yet. What the? What was this dude's deal? Well, the pigs were in for quite a surprise. No! My beautiful, rustic, fragile house! I'll bet it was that guy from the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs. I'm telling you, that guy looked so familiar. I just get a bad feeling around him. Us, Us too. too! What are you going to do now? It's getting dark. I'm totally starving, and we have nowhere to sleep. I think you know what you guys have to do. Go find a hot air balloon and fly to Antarctica and change your names forever? No, I think you should apologize for being mean to Porchetta and see if she'll let you stay at her house. Uh, I don't like apologizing. Me neither. Well, sometimes you have to do things you don't want to just because it's the right thing. Uh, you're probably right. Plus, we really need help. This should be interesting. So Little Red, Hamon, and Hamilton, with their piggy tails between their legs, went to talk to their sister. When they arrived, they were in for quite a surprise. Oh guys, it looks like her house isn't even done yet. Uh, hello, Porchetta. We started building like weeks ago. Oh, uh, what's taking so long? Hi guys. Well, it takes time if you want to do a good job. Blech! Who would want to do a good job? I just want it to be fast. I mean, maybe we could have tried a little harder on our houses? Come on, why don't you tell her what happened? Well, basically, our houses are gone. Kaput, zilch, dunzo. What? How? What happened? I don't know. I mean, you'd think straw and sticks would be... You built your houses with straw and sticks? No wonder they fell down. Well, they didn't exactly fall down. The pigs explained to Porchetta the whole story. She was shocked, but also not 100% surprised because her brothers were known for always taking the easy route. So if you guys learned your lesson... That we should have stayed with mom and dad? No, that it's important to work hard and take your time doing things the right way. Even if it's really, really annoying? Yes, even if it's really annoying. So what are we going to do to make things right? Well, I guess we should say we're sorry, Porchetta, for being rude to you. That's okay, we're family. Let's build this house together and keep that crazy guy out. He kind of looks like a wolf. OMG, that's it. He's the big bad wolf. I've dealt with that guy before. Ah, uh, we pigs definitely don't like wolves. Well, we just need to make this house super strong. I've been using bricks, one by one. Oh man, no wonder you have such strong muscles. Yep. And we should set traps, just in case. So they all worked together and really hard to make a house out of bricks. It was difficult and they had to take little breaks. You guys, I'm sweating over here. Let's have some lemonade. Oh, I forgot I had a bunch of treats in my basket. Let's have a little picnic. Ooh, cranberry scones, my favorite. <sighs> it's so good, but <sighs> I'm sleepy. And so they all took a well-deserved little rest. While they were sleeping, the big bad wolf showed up. He tiptoed past them so they wouldn't wake up. But when he tried to open Porchetta's front door... Ooh, what is that? Yes, my first trap worked. I'll be back. Good thinking, Hamon. You saved us. Saved by the slime, yeah. What do you think the wolf wanted? Yeah, are we in trouble? 
There is something fishy going on here. I guess we do need to set some traps, just in case he comes back. So they set up all different kinds of traps to protect them from the wolf. They set up invisible wire. They filled buckets with glue and feathers. They spread out syrup all over the floor to make them stick and not be able to run away. They made that thingy. Well, the whole house is basically ready. Yay, secret sibling cheer. Let's do it. One pig, two pig, three pigs a dollar. All for the family, stand up and holler. Yeehaw! While the pigs in Little Red were feeling really proud of themselves, Mom and Dad Pig were at home feeling, well, oh, 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 I miss my little piglets so much. Darling, they are 32 years old. It was time for them to move out. But there's so much more I wanted to teach them. They don't even know how to make beef bourguignon yet. That doesn't sound too necessary. But that is your favorite dish. What are we supposed to do now? I guess we could sit on these chairs and stare out the window for the rest of our lives. So yeah, you could say they weren't dealing with the separation too well. But back at the brick house, things were getting interesting. So you just take these two corners and put them together like this. Wow, that was easy. Yeah, we really could have been doing this ourselves for the past... Oh, 20 years. Mom and Dad really did a lot for us. It feels good to be on our own. I love learning new things. And next, I'm going to teach you to balance a checkbook. Whoa, now you guys really are grown-up pigs. The pigs in Little Red were so excited about being grown-ups now that they did so many grown-up things. They went food shopping. They paid bills. They even babysat their neighbor's baby piglets. They did a great job. I am so proud of us. But one thing we haven't faced yet, the wolf. So like I said, the pigs in Little Red were doing lots of grown-up things. Only problem was, they hadn't faced the wolf yet. Was he going to come and try and blow the brick house down? That wolf may come back soon, but we can't wait around forever for bad things to happen. That's true. So what is something really grown-up you can do right now? I, I, I really want to visit mom and dad. <clears throat> I mean, we, we should go say hi or, or whatever. You're right, Hamilton. We'll show them how responsible we'll be in now. Little Red, you coming? Yeah, this I gotta see. <laughs> so they all went for a visit to the pig parents. Luckily, Mom Pig had that classic maternal instinct and must have predicted their return because warm, freshly made chocolate chip cookies were waiting for the pigs when they arrived. Finally, all of my little piglets under one roof again. Oh, how I missed you. While we're here, maybe you guys should be honest with your parents about what happened to your houses? Well, um... Come on, guys. Honesty is the best policy. We were being kind of lazy. And we took the easier road. But it didn't turn out so good. Yeah, we made our houses out of sticks and straw, and then this wolf guy came and blew our houses down. <gasps> but, but don't worry. They learned their lesson and have been working really hard to make one big, strong house. You. Here, we have some pictures of what we've been up to. I mean, not everything went according to plan. <laughs> oh yeah, this one time we were cooking soup. And we mistook sugar for salt. So we ended up with this really sweet broccoli soup. Ew. I mean, I didn't hate it. It was kind of good. <laughs> we are so proud of you all. You really are growing up and learning how to do things for yourselves. Well, we learned from the best, you guys. Aww. We really should be going. See you all soon. And Little Red, thanks for helping our piglets. You betcha. Bye. See you bye later. Love see ya. So Little Red and the pigs headed towards the fairy tale forest to get to their brick house. They were enjoying the stroll when suddenly they almost ran into the white rabbit. Man, what is going on? Now this guy looks really familiar too. I'm late. I'm late! I'm very, very late! Well, don't let us stop you. It looks like you're on a very important mission. I am, and I'm late! But the strangest thing happened just a moment ago. Uh, are you gonna tell us, or what? Oh, right. 
Well, I was hopping along minding my own beeswax when I ran into this big wolf-looking guy. The wolf. wolf! Right, and he said he was also running late. Yeah? To go see a family of pigs. Ah. And you all look like pigs to me, so I thought I'd just let you know. Thank you, sir. We gotta go. They ran back to their brick house, but luckily when they arrived home, no wolf was in sight. <sighs> oh, looks like we beat him here. Well, all our traps are ready, so let's just wait. Little Red and the pigs waited. And waited. And waited. But they were abruptly awoken by the sound of their doorbell. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Not, Not by, by the hairs of our chin chin chins. Well, then I'll hop and I'll pop and I'll. Okay, you can come in. Sheesh, finally. Whoa! Sounds like the first thing worked. Pigs, where are you? We're in here. Come find us. When the wolf came through the next door, a big bucket of glue dumped on him from above. Then Hamon tossed a bag of feathers on top of the glue. He kind of looked like a chicken. We don't know why you've been so mean to us and destroyed our houses, but you're not getting this one too. Yeah. Oh, there you are. He started to run towards the pigs, but got stuck on the syrup on the floor trap. What in the world? Ha ha, gotcha. Now you're going to tell us what you've been up to, or else. So the pigs and Little Red had finally caught the wolf. He was stuck in a syrup on the floor trap. Sounds sticky, but also kind of yummy. See here, Wolf, you gotta answer some tough questions. Me? Yeah, you. First, where did you get that shirt? It's so cute. Well, it was on sale at... No, stop. We want to know why you're here. Yeah, why did you blow down my house of straw? And why did you blow down my house of sticks? And will you reimburse me for the $4 it took to make it? Hello, I need the cash. And honestly, you've really scared me. I have a fear of leaf blowers. And I have a fear of little pieces of wood. Um, aren't sticks basically little pieces of wood? And you built your house out of them? Maybe. Whatever, Little Red. And I'm afraid we are never going to get to the bottom of this if you two goofballs don't hush and let the wolf answer our questions. Right. Okay, Mr. Uh, wolf Guy. My friends call me Fred. Whatever. You destroyed my friends' houses, and you scared us, and you even came back to destroy this house. What gives? Well, uh... Tell us. The truth is, it was all an accident. What? Remember those papers I had you sign when you got the job? Yeah? Well, they're actually the deeds to your unbuilt houses. How dare you! What are deeds again? Well, basically, I had them sign over the houses to me so that I own them. You lied to us! Sort of. Why did you come back here then? Well, I was planning my next heist when I got a special visit from the fairy godmother. Do da do da do. Oh, big bad wolf! Ah, what? Who? What are you? Um, you don't know me. I'm pretty famous. You look a little like my grandma, but with wings. Well, I'll have you know, I am the fairy godmother. Okay. Ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh. We need to talk. But I don't like talking to old people. Pardon me. So rude. And I. 3,856 years young anyway. You're right. I'm sorry. Old people are lovely. I'm just a little bit on edge. Well, you should be, because I know you have been up to no good. Excuse me? I have only been tricking a bunch of innocent and a little bit dense pigs into signing their entire life savings and their houses over to me. What's so bad about that? Um, are you kidding? You know, now that I say it out loud, it does sound uh, pretty bad. So, Wolf, deep down, you know it's not kind of trick people. But they are not people. They are pigs. You know what I mean. And it's important to not be selfish. And you should think of others. I know, I know. You need to make it right. Go apologize and fix it. So, that's basically what happened with the fairy godmother. Wow. And that's why I came to each of your houses to apologize and give you new papers to sign. You promise these are the right papers? That you aren't tricking us again? Yes, of course. These papers will fix everything. One question, though. 
Why were you always talking about huffing and puffing and... Oh, simple. I have the worst asthma. I'm pretty much always huffing and puffing. And why did you blow our houses down with fans and leaf blowers? I was bringing those to you as a housewarming gift. But I'm not so good with machines, so I lost control. So you blew the houses down by accident? Pretty much. Well, I guess we should also apologize to you, because I think our traps were a little bit mean. Yeah, they didn't make me feel too good. But it does taste good. We are sorry. We just needed to defend ourselves against home invaders. I get it. Well, it sounds like everything is all worked out. I think there's only one thing left to do. What? what? Have a dance party! Yay! Yay! So the new friends danced and danced and danced. Porchetta was actually a really good dancer. Check this out. Little Red, on the other hand, was pretty silly. After all was said and done, they had a great time together. But Little Red realized something. My grandma. Little Red hadn't exactly forgotten about visiting her grandma. After all, she had kept checking on her and knew she was feeling better, but still. Well, I have to get there fast. Anyone have an electric scooter? Those things are awesome. Actually, I can call in a favor. I know a guy. Ooh, sounds interesting. Look out below. Cool. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye, Red. Well, I think it's time for cupcakes. Yay! Hi, I'll take it from here. My name is Bonnie, but everyone calls me Little Red Riding Hood. I have no idea why. <laughs> anyway, my life is pretty cool, almost fairy tale like I live in a house in a small village where everyone is super friendly and nothing bad ever happens. Well, one time the market ran out of chocolate chip cookies and that was a really bad day. <laughs> but other than that, everything is thumbs up all the time. <laughs> I'm pretty much friends with everyone I know, but my very best friend of all time is my grandma. <laughs> She's the sweetest, most amazing lady you'll ever meet. We do like everything together. We bake. We travel. We do arts and crafts. We go to the movies. And we just hang out. But whatever we do, it's just great to be together. <laughs> So anyway, let's get into the story. It all started when I got a call. Hello? Hello, Little Red. It's Grandma. Achoo! Gazootite, are you sick? I think so. My head is achy. My belly hurts. I've got chills. And I can't get out of bed. No, that's terrible. I'll be right over with soup and juice and medicine and ice cream. Ice cream is essential when you're sick. Alrighty, I'm all packed up. To grandmother's house we go. <laughs> I couldn't waste any time, so I decided to take a shortcut through the woods. Even though my mom specifically said to stick to the village roads, and everything was fine. Easy breezy and honky dory, until I started to sneeze. Achoo! 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 Oh no, am I getting sick too? Was that a dog? I'm allergic to dogs. That must be why I'm achoo! sneezing. I better hurry up and get to Grandma's house. So I picked up the pace. Hello. Uh, 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 a talking dog? No, I am a wolf. Oh, uh, oh! I beg your pardon, talking wolf. Wait, a wolf? Too scary. Don't be afraid. I am a nice wolf. Okay. Could there really be such a thing as a nice wolf? I'm not so sure. Uh, uh, achoo! Bless you. Thanks. I think I'm a little bit allergic to you. Oh, no. Well, then I'll leave you. But could you spare a crumb of food for a poor old wolf? I'm hungry. Well, this stuff is for my grandma. She's sick. I'm going to her house now. Is that right? Well, I can't let you do that. <laughs> You, you can't? No, I insist you must pick some flowers first. Oh, pick some flowers? <laughs> yes, it will cheer your grandmother up. Oh, and do you know any jokes? Jokes? Her laughter is the best medicine. You absolutely must tell her some jokes. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> I'll bring her some flowers and tell her some hilarious jokes. 
She'll be better in no time. Say, do you know any jokes? Oh, certainly. What do you call a lost wolf? What? A werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one? Knock, knock. Who's there? Werewolf. Werewolf who? Werewolf I find the bathroom. <laughs> How about this one? What did the wolf say when someone stepped on his foot? What? Ow! Mm, these are pretty great. Thanks. My pleasure. Oh my, what big teeth you have. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Well, goodbye. And with that, the wolf bounded away into the woods. He seemed nice enough, right? Grandma's gonna love these flowers, but I better get going. It's getting late. So I skipped ahead to Grandma's house, and again, everything was just fine until I <gasps> uh, tripped. Uh, uh, huh? I'm stuck in a trap. But who would set a trap? I've only seen that wolf around here, and he seemed perfectly nice. But what I didn't know at the time, kids, was that Wolf was not nice at all. In fact, he was... Bad! In fact, I am so bad that people call me a big, bad wolf. I'm so bad that I do things like huff and paw and blow your house down. So bad that one time I ate a little boy just because he kept crying, Wolf! And now I've set a trap for Little Red Riding Hood all because I want to get to Grandma's house first. Why, you ask? Well, because I'm going to eat her. Don't act surprised. I told you, I am bad. So, Little Red Riding Hood is probably stuck in a trap somewhere. And look at me. I'm on my way to Grandma's house. Bon appetit. Hello? Grandma, it's me. Meanwhile, ugh, I'm totally stuck. All right, time to show off my survival skills. Super crucial survival skill number one, yell for help. Help! 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 Kids, I yelled and yelled, but it didn't seem like anyone was around to hear. What's that saying? If a tree falls in a forest and there's no one around to hear it, does it even make a sound? Well, that's how I felt. Like a sad, lonely tree. Hello? Huh? Hello? I'm over here! Where? Here! Keep talking! I'll follow your voice! Oh, well, I've been stuck here for a while, and I was going to my grandma's because I was, I was, but I stopped because it was a wolf, because then I said, so I got some flowers, and then I picked the flowers, I put them in my bag, and I was running, and I was running, and I was so tired, a little bit hungry, too. You know, I feel like I'm kind of sweating. It's a little bit humid today, and, oh! Hi, I got stuck in this trap. Can you help me? Of course. There you go. Oh, I'm free. <laughs> Thanks, mister. Name's Big Al, licensed lumberjack. I'm Little Red Riding Hood. Pleased to make your acquaintance. You may be wondering what I'm doing in the woods this late. Well, I'm on my way to my grandma's house. See, she's sick. Everything was fine until I got distracted by that old wolf. I think I'm allergic to him. And then I got stuck in this darn trap. You say you saw a wolf? Yeah, a talking wolf. Crazy, right? Did he have a fancy sounding accent? Yeah, he did actually. How did you know? That wolf is bad news. But he seemed so nice. Little Red, if you don't mind, I'd like to walk with you the rest of the way to your grandma's house. You know, that wolf, he might be dangerous. Oh. I'd be most appreciative, Big Al. So Big Al the Lumberjack walked with me, keeping watch for the wolf. But we didn't see him. And I didn't have any sniffles or sneezes at all, so he must have been far away. <gasps> Look, there's my grandma's house. Thanks for the escort, Big Al. <laughs> no problem. See you around. Grandma, it's me, Little Red. <clears throat> Come on in. Wow, she sounds really sick. Good thing I'm here. <laughs> Grandma? Huh? Huh? Achoo! Hello, little red. Need a tissue? Okay, so that's not my grandma, obviously. It's the big bad wolf. But he's wearing my grandmother's clothes. <laughs> As if that would fool me. Whatever. I'll just play along. Wow, grandma. You look real sick. 
Yes, I'm quite ill. I mean, just awful. You look dreadful. Terrible. Okay, I get it. Enough. And my, how big your teeth look. I don't remember your teeth looking so ridiculously huge. Oh? I mean, oh. And you're so hairy. I don't remember you being so fuzzy. I should probably give you a nice shave. Let me go fetch a razor. No. I mean, I should lie down. I'm feeling quite queasy. Oh, of course. So I tucked in the big bed walls. Weird, I know. <laughs> he actually did seem a little ill, though. Went out like a light. But never mind that. I needed to find my grandma. I looked all around the house. Under beds. Behind the curtains. Inside cupboards. In the basement. Grandma. In the closets. On the roof. Grandma. Everywhere. Where could she be? But then I heard something. Ah! Grandma? I looked everywhere. Where could the sound be coming from? Little Red! I followed the sound of my grandmother's voice all the way to... Help me! Huh? Get me out of here, Red! Shh! The wolf is sleeping. How did you get inside his belly? He ate me! What? Swallowed me in one gulp. Lucky for me, he doesn't chew his food. That's why he was feeling so queasy. Well, I'm gonna get you out of there, Grandma. Don't you worry. Hurry. Achoo! Bless you. Thank you. So kids, I was really in a pickle. How was I supposed to get my grandmother out of the big bad wolf's belly? I decided to consult an expert, the internet. Uh, I keep trying to get Grandma to upgrade. Come on, come on! I'm in a hurry, Internet! What's time for this? Yeesh! Finally. Okay, here we go. What to do when your grandma gets eaten by a big bad wolf? Hmm. Says here I gotta make the wolf throw up. Ew. Gross! Or else I'd have to perform surgery to get her out? Ugh. I know. I'll call the veterinarian, of course. Hello? Dr. Veterinarian, I have a bit of an emergency. I need an operation for my, uh, pet, Wolf. Oh, you don't? Okay, thanks anyway. <sighs> okay, so it turned out the veterinarian had a strict no wolf policy. Okay, Grandma, looks like we're gonna need to do the throw up thing. Yuck. <sighs> oh no, where'd he go? Where'd the big bad wolf take my grandma? Oh, I ran outside. Grandma! I figured the wolf couldn't have gotten very far, so I set off through the woods to find them. But the woods were getting a little dark and extra scary. Uh, but I knew I had to be brave to rescue my grandma from the big bad wolf. Slow down, you're jostling me. Can it, Granny? Mind your manners, young man. I've got to remember to chew next time. What was that? Boy, I wish I had picked a less annoying grandma to eat. Oh. I heard that. Grandma! Ah! Oh, no, not her. Over here, little red. Ow! Jostling. Grandma! Grandma! Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back. You know me, of course. I am the big bad wolf. Yes, we all know you're big and bad. whoop de doo that's Little Red's grandma. She's in my belly. Yep, and it stinks to high heaven in here. Shush, Grandma, and quit moving around in there. You're giving me indigestion. You just wait. Little Red will come and save me. She's the smartest little whippersnapper I ever saw. But she has to find me first, and she'll never do that. <laughs> Check it out! I've got the best video games, a milkshake machine, a foosball, and a super classy waterbed. This is where I hibernate, aka nap for the entire winter. Wolves don't hibernate. That's for bears. Well, that's not fair. Hibernation is the best. You eat a huge meal, and then you settle down for a long winter's nap. What could be better? Whatever. And you should be glad, Granny. That means you'll be safe in my tummy for a long, long time. 
So I'd been all over the dark woods looking for the big bad wolf and of course my grandma. For a while, I could hear my grandma calling for me, but then I lost track of her. Grandma, 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 grandma. See, nothing. I was so scared. What if I never found her? I was starting to freak out. And when I freak out, the only thing I can do to calm me down is a solo dance party. Little Red? Oh, 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 hey, Big Al. <laughs> Celebrating because your grandma's all better? No, not even close. She's gone and I can't find her, Big Al. You were right about the wolf. He's big and he's bad and he ate my grandma. What? Yeah, I know. So I've been looking all over for her and it's like they just disappeared. So, you're dancing? That's what I do to calm down. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Well, let's go find your grandma. You help me? Of course. You think I'm gonna stand by while some big bad wolf is terrorizing nice girls and eating their grandmas? It's on. All right, <laughs> let's go kick some big bad wolf tail. <laughs> so, we were off to find the big bad wolf and rescue my grandma. <laughs> A gazillion hours later. But the finding part turned out to be really super crazy hard. It seriously was like the big bad wolf had just disappeared into thin air. Oh, where are they? We've looked all over the woods and no sign of them anywhere. Oh, and my nose didn't even tingle once. Huh? Oh, <laughs> I'm allergic to the wolf. So when I'm near him, my nose gets all itchy and sniffly. It's like my spidey sense. I see, and no sniffles? Nope, I'm the perfect picture of health. Unfortunately, I feel like we just need a lucky break. I know, right? Well, no use in hanging around here. Yeah, let's go. That's right, walk away. Nothing to see here. <laughs> what? Is Little Red nearby? Little Red, I'm right here. Come back. It's no use, Granny. Just about time for my nap, so keep it down in there, okay? Uh, what? What was that? Nothing. Shh. I knew she'd come back. Little Red, Little Red. Ah, <clears throat> Big Al, I sneezed. Oh, sorry. Bless you. No, Al, I sneezed. Oh, right. That means he's right under. Uh, uh, Hey guys! So yeah, I was starting to fear I'd never find the Big Bad Wolf and save my grandma, but then my reliable Big Bad Wolf detector went off. My allergies. Achoo! Achoo! Oh, so he's got to be here somewhere. But where? Huh? Is he hiding up in the tree branches? Maybe he has a tree house. Tree houses are very cool. Yeah, they are. <laughs> uh, doesn't look like there's anything up there. I don't get it. We've looked all over. To the left, to the right. We've looked up. Hey, we haven't looked down yet. Oh, well, I think that we would have noticed if you're sitting on the ground, Al. <laughs> Maybe he's underneath the ground. Hmm, like a super secret big fat wolf hideout or something. <gasps> I know it sounds crazy, but. Hey, what's that blinking red light? Huh? Looks like a security camera. In the woods? Ah! Did you hear that? The wolf! Ha <laughs> ha! We're on to you, wolf! Yeah! Watch out! Here we come! Uh, Big Al, how do we get down there? Good question! Wait, I got it! Okay, nope, that don't work! Ha 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 ha! Nice try! Dang! Now how are we gonna get down there? Um, Big Al, look! Hey, did I do that? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of by accident, but whatever, let's go! Gotcha! Freeze, Wolfie! Little Red, thank goodness! Okay, Wolf, it's time to give me back my grandma. Cough her up! Never! 
Well, I guess Big L is going to have to chop her out. Yikes! No way! Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's not really in my job description. Okay, well, then the Big Bad Wolf is going to have to throw her up. Ew. Oh, I hate throwing up. It's icky. Well, it's icky being inside here. Do what Little Red says. Ouch! Did you just kick me? Yeah, and there's more where that came from, too. Ow! Cut it out, Granny, or I'll eat Little Red here for dessert. Oh, no, you won't. hi -ya. Grandma! Little Red! Yuck! Oh, now my breath totally stinks. Ew. Oh, Little Red, I am so glad you found me. Me too, but my job's not over yet. Big Al, let's tie this wolf up. Tie me up? You're going to jail. No! Pretty happy ending, right? <laughs> we saved Grandma and the big bad wolf was about to go to jail. Uh, Little Red? Yeah, what? He got away! What? How? I don't know! He just up and vanished! Granny, did you see which way he went? Don't ask me! Oh no, the big bad wolf is on the loose! Again! So, the big bad wolf had escaped. Just gone! The moose split like a banana! There must be a secret tunnel or something! Cool! This isn't cool, Big Al. We have to get to the wolf. He's a villain. Come on! A secret hideout with an underground escape tunnel? You gotta admit, that's pretty cool. Not if we can't find the escape tunnel. I mean, we just poke a book or something and the doorway just opens up? Ah! Hey, you found it! Grandma! It looks just like a water slide. Come on, Big Al, we're going in. Woohoo! We're coming for you, Grandma! Okay, little red! Ah! Ouch! Ow! Uh, ow! It's dark down here! Where are we? I think we're in the sewer! Like those ninja turtles! That means we must be close to town. We'll just climb out and find the police. They'll be able to help us catch the big bad wolf. Nice try, but no! This is actually a dungeon. <laughs> ah, the big bad wolf! That's right, and you're my prisoners now. Forever! <laughs> you're trapped. You'll never get out. No way! Let us out! Huh? Ah! A good lumberjack never travels without his tools. Well then, I guess I'll just have to run! Ow! I guess you're just trapped down there forever now, huh? <laughs> Sad. Okay, so now I can finally report that there was a happy ending. We fetched the police and they came for the big bad wolf. Big Al and I got super cool deputy badges and our pictures in the paper. And Grandma got a high-tech security system to keep the big bad wolves out. Hello? It's me, Grandma. Hi, not a big bad wolf or anything. <laughs> just making sure. Gotta play it safe. And best of all, I got my grandma slash best friend back. <laughs> I went to visit her like every single day. Big Al even came over sometimes. And we would just sit around and laugh about the time the big bad wolf got trapped in his own stinky dungeon. <laughs> and eat ice cream, of course. <laughs> ice cream is essential when you're hanging out with friends. Hey kids, it's time for a brand new adventure with the stupendous, stupendous, and mighty penultimate. Today, Drew saves Earth from stuff that's fallen from the sky. We got a special visitor popping by today. It's Sunny Shiner. See if you can find him hiding out in today's episode. Let us know in the comments below how many times you found Sunny. It was morning and Drew was getting ready for a brand new day of cool school. Cool school time, my favorite time ever. Ah, uh, another beautiful school day. Perfectly sunny with a chance of... Falling objects? Huh? I've never seen that before. Sure enough, there was stuff falling all over the place. Old toys, mismatched socks, shoes, little dresses, you name it. Not your classic rain shower, kids. We're seeing increased levels of, uh, stuff falling from the sky. Please do not leave your homes without heavy duty helmets. Schools will remain closed until further notice. Schools closed? This can't be right. I'm not gonna let some weird weather ruin cool school, especially on pizza day. Drew pulled out his mighty penultimate and sketched a super awesome jetpack spacesuit. That stuff's gotta be falling from somewhere, and I'm gonna get to the bottom of it, or the top of it. You know what I mean. Drew, you in there? Uh, what are you doing? 
Just wearing a jetpack spacesuit so I can follow the following objects and figure out where they're coming from. Wanna come? Uh, yeah. I knew it was a good idea to come here. This is gonna be epic. Sweet. Now, quick. Cool school's supposed to start in an hour. We don't have much time. June and Ella jetpacked outside and followed all those falling objects way up into the sky. Ooh, I could use a new pair of sneaks. Higher and higher they went, past the clouds and a bunch of planets, until finally they spotted just what they were looking for. All this stuff is coming from that planet. Wait a sec. I know that place. That's where Grace Kale lives. It was Mercury, the gray planet. Game's over, Grace. Come on out. Uh, hey, Drew. And other Drew person. Um, I'm Ella. Whatever. What are you doing here, Drew? I haven't done anything villainy lately. Uh, yeah, you did. You're throwing all your stuff off your planet and making it fall into Earth. No, I'm not. Did you ask my sister? She's been following in my evil footsteps lately. Your sister? Drew and Ella followed Grace to her house. Brought some friends over, Gracie. Remember, no evil schemes before your homework. Okay, Mom. Ugh. Sis, are you doing anything evil in here? Uh, kinda. Mom made me clean out my closet, but that's like a drag. So I just tossed everything outside. And, like, use a gravity gun to make everything fall towards Earth? Um, yeah. Otherwise, Mom would see it floating around in space, and I'd be, like, grounded. Nice, sis. Classic villain move. Well, there's your answer. Woo-hoo. Now scram. Uh-uh, not so fast. We're not going anywhere until all that stuff stops falling down from space. And who are you, exactly? I am Drew Pendis, and I am here to put an end to your evil shenanigans. Yeah, you can't just drop all of your stuff on the cool school. Ooh, awesome crib, by the way. But then where am I going to put it all? Hmm, I think I have an idea. Drew sketches on a super awesome gravity gun. And he uses it to pull all the junk back to Mercury. And now a good old Martian flea market to sell it all. <laughs> Baby toys, little dresses, picture books. Come on and get them before they're all gone. Come on, people. You don't see these kinds of prices on planet Earth. Within seconds, <laughs> alien fleas from all over the solar system came over. Turns out alien fleas take their shopping pretty seriously. Guess that's why it's called the flea market. There you go, now you can get rid of all your stuff and get money to buy new toys. All my stuff is selling like hotcakes. Come get your hotcakes, straight off the sun, hottest hotcakes in town. Well, I guess we better get going if we want to make it in time for cool school. Finally, a field trip that isn't another lightsaber battle. Lame. I am so out of here. Adios, aliens. And off they went, soaring back to planet Earth, this time without any flying objects getting in their way. Phew, just in time. Wow, this place is so cool. And everyone looks so not evil. No, ma'am, the most evil thing you'll get around here are Sloppy Joes on Meat Mondays. Ugh. But there's nothing better than Pizza Thursdays. Mmm. Well, kids, Drew saved the day once again. No more stuff falling from the sky. Cool School is totally back in action. And they even got a new student. Moral of the story, boys and girls, don't throw your stuff off a planet where mom tells you to clean your room. And be sure to snatch up great deals at the Martian Flea Market when there's one near you. Ahem, that's not my real name. That's just what my mean stepsisters and stepmother call me. <laughs> my real name is Ella. Actually, let's begin my story there. When I was Ella and everything was nice and peaceful and lovely. I was an only child, but I had a ton of pets. So when I was little, I was never, ever lonely. Two cats, Sir Bonkers and Lady Blinky, a dog named Patches, a hamster named Spinner, a tortoise named Fudge, a lizard named a lizard Biff, a pony named Pegasus, not a real Pegasus, but that would be really cool, and a goldfish named Goldie. 
Okay, so Goldie wasn't such great company. Moving on. My dad was the greatest dad of all time, seriously. And he told the awesomest bedtime stories ever. And then the big bad wolf said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. And then the little pig squealed, Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. See, he was really good at doing voices. So let's see, my pets were cool, my dad was the best. Oh, and our town was super neat too. We lived in the kingdom, excuse me, a queendom of Queen Elaine the First. She put on fabulous tea parties and concerts and musicals, like all the time. <laughs> so yeah, things were pretty great, but I must have been cursed by an evil witch or something because one day my dad told me that he was getting married. <gasps> okay. That's not the terrible part. It would have been awesome if you were marrying Queen Elaine or somebody cool like that, but no way. Somehow he found the meanest lady ever in the history of meanness. But it wasn't his fault, I guess, because at first she pretended to be so nice. Hello there, Ella. Do you like candy? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey. Too late. You snooze, you lose. And those were my two new stepsisters, Gritzel and Unga. They never even bothered pretending to be nice. Anyway, my dad was duped, and suddenly I had a new family. My stepsisters had a real su casa is mi casa kind of attitude. In other words, they took all my That's stuff. Mine. I want it. Mine. Gimme. Okay, I'm all about sharing is caring, guys, but come on, you can't take all my clothes. Here, you can wear this. Then they said they were scared of all my animals, so scared that my dad had to banish them all to the barn outside. Even a lizard bit, she'll get cold. Too scary. But what about Goldie? Come on, all she does is sit there and go Take her away! They all have to go! I'm sorry, guys. I'll visit you. The great animal exodus wasn't the end of it. Whenever my dad was away, the step monsters would treat me like a servant. I did the sweeping. I did the windows. <laughs> I did the vacuuming! And being big old meanies, Gritzel and Unga constantly made messes on purpose. Whoops! <laughs> I cleaned nonstop, day in and day out. And I was a mess, always covered in dust and grime, which led to me getting a new nickname. Ew, Ella, you're all covered in cinders from the chimney. Maybe we should call you Cinder Ella. Cinder Ella. So yeah, Ella. this all lasted a few years. Then my dad left for this big fishing trip expedition thingy. That's when my stepmother decided I should move into the barn. It was cold and dark and a little scary, but I had my animals and that was nice. Aw, plus some field mice. Hi guys. <laughs> anyway, my dad wouldn't be gone forever, right? He'd come back and see how mean my step family was and give them the boot, right? Do you guys remember now? That's right, it's Greetzel and Unga. Ugh, they are the worst. Let's watch the rest of the story now. Life in the barn wasn't so bad. Cinderella had made a nice little room for herself. Being that much closer to the rooster meant I never overslept. And it sure was convenient being able to just roll over and start my chores. But I missed my old life especially my dad. It seems like he had been gone for his fishing trip like forever. Then I heard the awful news. Extra, extra, awful news. Local dad captured by pirates. Yep, my dad had been captured by a gang of pirates. And to make matters worse, my stepmother and stepsisters didn't even seem to care. He'll be fine. Who cares? I can't worry. It gives me wrinkles. Oh, they were the worst. Fine. I'll go find him. Don't be ridiculous. You have to stay here and take care of us. No way. I'm going to go find him and fight the pirates. I'll hire a search party. They'll find him and bring him home. Really? Really. But like, really, really? Really, really, really. Gosh. Can we stop talking about pirates and like get some breakfast? Yeah, really. Cinder, really. <laughs> <sighs> 
fine. With my dad gone so long, things went from very bad to way worse. My stepmother decided it was time for my stepsisters to get married. And of course, I had to help. There were etiquette lessons. The most difficult task was teaching them how to be not terrible. Would you like to go for a walk? You don't have a carriage. Ew, next. Okay, so maybe don't yell so much. Why? Never mind. It was beginning to feel pretty useless. My stepsisters were just big old meanies. Meanwhile, my dad was still out there somewhere with a crusty old gang of pirates. Actually, that doesn't sound so bad compared to these guys. Good thing I still have you guys. <laughs> Good night, Sir Bonkers, Lady Blinky, Patches, Spinner, Fudge, a lizard Beth, Pegasus, Goldie. <laughs> Good night to you, Squeakers, Pip and Puff Puff. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Rooster. Shh. Save it for the morning. That night, I had a beautiful dream. My dad was home safe and sound. My stepmother and Gritzel and Unga were nowhere in sight. Amazing! I was all dressed up, no more rags, and I had the prettiest slippers. It was almost as if they were made of glass. <laughs> What's all that racket? Why didn't you wake me, Mr. Rooster? We must get to work immediately! This is so exciting! What's going on? The queen is having a ball and we're all invited. Whoa! I just had a dream that I was dressed up in a beautiful gown. <laughs> just like I was going to a royal ball. That's so funny! That is funny. You in a gown. Get it? Because you wear rags! Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Whatever. They're rude. I was used to it, but a royal ball? Now this is exciting! I have to make a dress! And my hair. What am I gonna do with my hair? And I have to prepare some witty banter. I haven't been around people, well, people I actually want to talk to in forever. <laughs> I hope people still like knock-knock jokes. Those are my specialty. My stepmother had said I couldn't go to the ball. Well, I would just have to find a way, wouldn't I? <laughs> I began preparations in secret. My stepsisters went through dresses like they were going out of style, so I had lots of material to choose from to craft a perfect gown. <laughs> a little satin here, a little silk there, some velvet, pearls, and voila! <gasps> the most beautiful dress in the world. Oh. Shoes wouldn't be so easy though. My stepsisters had thrown out all of my shoes back when they first moved in. None of these shoes fit. <laughs> anyway, one day I was cleaning the attic when I found a box that I had never noticed before. <gasps> shoes! These must have belonged to my mom. They were beautiful slippers that looked almost as if they were made of glass, just like in my dream. <gasps> and next to the shoes was the most exquisite necklace I'd ever seen. Everything was coming together perfectly. But it's not like the royal ball was the only thing I was thinking about. Curiously, I hadn't heard anything about my dad. You know, the whole being captured by pirates thing. Supposedly my stepmother was on it, but I just wasn't sure I could trust her. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Harvey Beeswax, private investigator, at your service. Hi, Mr. Beeswax. My dad was captured by a gang of pirates. I need your help. Pirates, eh? Yes, and my stepmother said that she can't find him, but she's done diddly squat. Diddly squat? That's not enough. I know. So, do you think you can find him? It'll be tough, but I'm the best private eye in the city. If anybody can find your pop, it'll be me. Great. I charge three gold bits an hour, plus expenses. Oh, right. Um, money. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Sorry, kid. No money, no detective. Wait, what if I paid you in jewels? Jewels? I like jewels. What do you got? So, I brought my mother's necklace to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Oh well, at least I still had the dress and shoes. Or so I thought. When I got home, I found this. It's mine. No, mine! Cinderella, who did you make this dress for? Me or Gritzel? Um... It's clearly for me. Blue makes you look like a blueberry. Well, blue makes you look like a, a blue whale. Cinderella, please settle this. I, I, I made it for myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Funny joke, right? <laughs> no, not really. Gee, I can't decide who it would look prettier on. Me, obviously. Uh-uh, me. 
Oops. I didn't like it anyway. Okay, well, let's see. I had started the day with a lovely ball gown, a diamond necklace, and glass slippers. And suddenly I had no dress, no jewelry. Well, at least I still had the shoes. They didn't fit anyway. Welp, back to square one. It's finally the day of the ball. And I had nothing to wear. <laughs> what do you think, Pegasus? Could this be shabby chic? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Too casual. Cinderella, come here. <laughs> Ugh, gotta get to work. Meanwhile, hmm, no sign of Cinderella's old man yet, but I'll solve this case. Getting Gritzel and Unga ready was no small task. They required bubble baths, manicures, pedicures, blowout. Finally, my stepsisters were ready for the royal ball. You guys look really nice. Um, we know. Okay, well, have a great time. <laughs> Unga, don't yell too much. And Gritzel, remember to say please and thank you. But don't forget to have some fun. That's quite enough talk, Cinderella. Goodbye. I'll be honest, I was kind of sad. I retreated to the barn with some snacks to eat my feelings. I know, it's pretty cliche, but I was sad, okay? And then, I don't know why, but I yelled out, Oh, if I only had a fairy godmother. <laughs> Yoo-hoo. <laughs> Excuse me, frog on my throat. What's up? Did you find my dad? No, not yet. But like, don't give up, kid. I just came here to scrub for clues. Clues? Here? Yeah, you never know what you might find if you just look. You okay? Me? What? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not crying or anything. Okay. Well, uh, see ya. He left, and I went back to feeling sorry for myself. Why? 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 Mr. Beeswax? Sorry I'm late, sugar, but better late than never, right? Who are you? Your fairy godmother. I thought that part was pretty obvious. Whoa, I thought that was just fairy tale stuff. Cool. A lot of people think that, but I'm real. Watch this. Awesome! I know, right? So how does this work? Do I get like three wishes or something? Three wishes? What do I look like, a genie in a bottle? Oh, so no wishes? Darling, I'm here to make all your wishes come true. But not all at once. It doesn't work that way. Oh. And some of the wishes will be wishes you didn't even know you wished yet. Say what now? I know what's in your heart, sugar. How? Honey, I'm your fairy godmother. It's fairy magic, you see? All right, so first things first, let's get you ready for the ball. The ball? Yes, I so wanna to go to the ball. I had a dress and a necklace and shoes, but my stepsisters, they tore everything up. Well, not the necklace. I gave that to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Long story, but I really, 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 want really- want to go to the ball, yes, I know. And with a wave of my magic wand. Cinderella had just been explaining in detail the recent happenings that she had experienced to her fairy godmother. Yes, dear, I know. You want to go to the ball. So as I was saying, with a wave of my magic wand. Oh, yeah. Like, why wouldn't I want to go? Dancing, candy, disco balls, handsome princes, hopefully chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. OK, hold the phone, honey. We can't have you going to the ball looking like this. Ah, uh, rude. Well, I just mean you, you look uh, like a mess. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You just don't look like a princess, that's all. OK, listen, fairy GM, I think you need to quit while you're ahead and just help a sister out. Right, so what's your favorite color? Blue, bluish aqua, turquoise, um, aquamarine, bright blue. OK, all right, any shade of blue, I get it. With the wave of my magic wand. Yeah. And with all my magical powers combined. Yeah. I will give you the most beautiful, flowy, princessy, sparkly, on sale from Black Friday. Huh? 
ball gown. Yeah! <laughs> and what do you think, honey? I love it! Hey, what's this? Oh, nothing, dear. I'm so excited. The prince is deaf gonna want to juju on that beat with me at the ball. <laughs> Uh, you won't be dancing with those tootsies. Uh, yeah, I'm due for a mani-pedi soon. Well, stick your hands out and close your eyes, my little ragamuffin love. Boopy boopy blabity boo! These are the bomb! Ooh, hopefully I won't break them. I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, they fit perfect! <laughs> okay, I better get on my way. Oh, wait. Pretty sure the castle is like 48 miles away. That would take approximately 864 minutes if I walk, if I hustle. Cinderella, and... get it together. I'm gonna hook you up. Now go get me a pumpkin, spaghetti squash, any gourd or root vegetable ought to do. Uh, no gourds to speak of, but how about this? My Halloween bucket. Well, let me just get it. That'll do, I suppose. Cinderella put the bucket down, and with one more swirl of the magic wand, the bucket became a gorgeous, sparkling carriage. A carriage is kind of like a stroller, but for adults. <laughs> I am gonna look so cool riding up in this thing. <laughs> You're gonna look cool for sure, Cinderella, but you also need to act cool. You simply need to follow my four fabulous formulas for fetching friends at a farty. Excuse me, I mean party. Oh yeah, I could use all the help I can get. Step one. Always laugh at people's jokes. Or tell your own. Oh, I've been told I have an amazing laugh. Wonderful, let's hear it. <laughs> All right, that's very distinctive. Uh, maybe just take it down a few notches. Okay, whatever. What's next? Step two, find common interests. Cheese puffs? Oh, those are my favorite snack. Snack, jinx, <laughs> same. I love those. See, we're so similar. <laughs> Okay, cheese puffs, got it. Okay, number three, be a dancing queen. Okay, this one is easy. I love dancing. Let me show you how it's done. You go, girl, do your thing. Whew, I was quite the mover and shaker in my day. Okay, so number four, I'm getting antsy and ready to go. Oh, well, you better get a move on. Um, I'll text you the rest. Sounds great, fairy godmother. <laughs> I'm just gonna be myself and have a blast. Hey, uh, who's driving this thing? My stepmother wouldn't let me go for my driver's license test. I almost forgot, you over there. And y'all over here. <laughs> well, we're off. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything, fairy. <laughs> you're the bestest in all the land. Well, you're certainly welcome. This is gonna be the best night of my life. Oh no, I forgot to tell her about the midnight thing. What is wrong with you? You forgot to tell Cinderella about the midnight rule. What were you thinking? Yoo-hoo, Cinderella! The fairy godmother caught up to the carriage and shouted after Cinderella. But clearly Cinderella was having so much fun, she didn't even notice. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> ah! Oh, you, uh, you scared me half to death. Cinderella, you can't go yet. Ah, fairy, you gotta cut the cord and let me go. I'm a grown woman. No, I mean the spell. <laughs> Say what now? The spell at midnight. You have to be long gone from the royal ball by then. Uh, I have no intention of leaving when the party is still hopping. No, you absolutely must. No. You have to. No. You have to. Cinderella, listen to me. If you don't, then all this magic will wear off. There's always a catch. But don't worry about it. Go, enjoy yourself. Just keep track of the time. No prob. I'll set an alarm on my phone. So Cinderella continued on her journey to the castle, super excited and super nervous to meet the prince. You guys, this is going to be the best night Ever! At the ball, Cinderella is having the time of her life. Woohoo! When suddenly she noticed two very familiar but not so friendly faces, her stepsisters. Ah, uh, brother. Or should I say, a sister. <laughs> These two. But the stepsisters didn't even notice her because they were too busy trying to vie for the prince's attention. Oh, by the way, there's the prince. Ooh, Unga, that prince is gonna love my dress. 
He's totes gonna dance the night away with me. No way, Grits. I'm sure he'll notice my breathtaking eyes and ask me to marry him. Meanwhile, Cinderella was doing her own thing and having so much fun at the ball. Then I told him, that's not a squirrel, it's a hamburger. <laughs> Oh, Princey, you look hungry. Let me fetch you a treat. No, I will. Ugh. Cinderella was totally enjoying her night out and away from the barn that she kind of forgot there was a prince at all. Hey, guys, who wants milkshakes? Cinderella, you are so much fun. Cinderella, guys, I don't want my stepsisters to overhear that I'm Cinderella. Please, um, please call me Sandy. Sandyrella, yep, that's me. <laughs> Why haven't we seen you around the kingdom before? Oh, uh, you know, I've just been, um, you guys, oh no, I don't want the people to know I live in a barn and I'm basically a servant. Oh, what were fairies rules again? Oh yeah, common interest. Cheese puffs, don't you guys love cheese puffs? <laughs> oh, cheese cheesy, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I love yes. them so much, they're so good. Phew, that was close. So Cinderella got back to the party, but she also started getting a bit sleepy. Woo! I am pooped, but I can't stop now. <laughs> Who knows when there'll be another royal ball. I'm sure I still got time. But the whole evening, the prince had been noticing the mystery girl, Cinderella, or <clears throat> Sandyrella, <laughs> and how happy she looked, and how she was being nice to everyone, and ate tons of cake without a care in the world. Whoa, she is a seriously cool chica. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, no, no, it was my mistake. Here, let me help you out. So, uh, this is some party. Oh, this old thing? Yeah, my mom goes kind of crazy. Yeah, my dad's kind of crazy, too. He was kidnapped by pirates. Yarg. Pirates? Whoa. Yeah, pirates. Do you want to dance? dance? Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh my oh gosh. gosh. I like your crown. Thanks. I like your dress. Yeah. Blue's my favorite color. No way. Mine too. Ooh, common interest. Bonus. So next week, uh, we're having this mini golf tournament here at the palace. Do you think you want to come? That sounds awesome. Cinderella had wondered how she would sneak away from her stepmother and stepsisters and come back to hang out with the prince, but... Whatever, she would figure it out. So it's a date, uh, I, I mean. But Cinderella didn't hear the prince because the music had gotten louder and she was feeling the beat. <laughs> so loud, in fact, that she didn't hear her alarm on her phone ringing. What's that noise? Huh? I said, what's that noise? Oh, it's just my phone. <laughs> oh no, my phone, I gotta go. Wait up, I didn't get your name. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no! Oh, oh no! Wait up! Oh no! Well, it was nice knowing you, beautiful glass slipper, but I gotta go! Wait! You left your shoe! Keep it! Huh? At least the carriage is the. Oh, great. And so, with one shoe, Cinderella walked all the way home, all 48 miles, which took exactly 864 minutes. She wasn't too sad, though. I mean, guys, <laughs> the prince danced with me a ton, and I made so many friends, and I did a conga line, and the limbo, and the robot, <gasps> and I must have had like five pieces of cake. <laughs> it was the best night of my whole life. That happiness lasted all through the next morning, even though her stepsisters were being particularly annoying. The prince is going to ask me on a date. No way! He's gonna ask me. Me. Me! Me! Well, we'll see who he putts with at the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. The Royal Mini Golf Tournament? I almost forgot! And wait, Gritzel and Oonga got invited? Oh boy. Mini golf tournament, huh? Don't worry about it, Cinderella. You're not allowed to go. Why not? Mom, tell Cinderella she can't go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. Cinderella, you most certainly cannot go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. Ugh, I hope that girl from last night doesn't go. She was the worst. What girl? This girl's Sandy or something. She hugged the prince for like a whole hour. So annoying. Gee, <laughs> yeah, I hope she doesn't show up. 
Cinderella decided she'd better practice her golf swing before the big tournament. Oh, you better believe I'm going. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'm going. Fairy godmother better come through for a sister. I'm gonna need some new duds. <laughs> what do you think, Sir Bonkers? How's my swing? <sighs> I guess I need to keep practicing. <laughs> Finally, the big day had arrived. Time to putt. <laughs> Cinderella waited for her fairy godmother to arrive. I wonder what kind of outfit I'm gonna get today. Oof, and I hope I get a new pair of shoes. <laughs> I love these glass slippers, but I can't golf in just one shoe. <laughs> I probably need sneakers anyway. Where is she? There she is. Ew. Mom says you have to go with us to the mini golf tournament. Yes! <laughs> okay, um, can I borrow a dress or something? I mean, I can't go looking like this. <laughs> you shouldn't go anywhere looking like that. But no, you can't borrow a dress. Unga, please. Cinderella, ugh, no one cares what you look like. We just need you to like hold our bags and get us drinks and stuff. Oh. So like, hurry up. Guys, the prince can't see me like this. All right, fairy godmother. <laughs> It'd be super great if you could show up about now. Uh, okay. Fine, I'll just go to the prince's palace wearing rags. No big deal or anything. <sighs> eh? There she is. The big day of the royal mini golf tournament had finally arrived and Cinderella was there. Awesome, right? Not so awesome. My fairy godmother didn't show up. And look at me, I'm wearing rags at the palace. You know where the prince lives? Ugh. Meanwhile, my stepsisters are playing miniature golf with said prince. Can my life get any worse? Heads up. Ow, oh, I guess it can. So yeah, Cinderella was pretty bummed. And so was the prince. He had really been looking forward to his mystery girl showing up. Why are you carrying around a shoe? Long story. And why do you keep gazing off into the distance? No reason. Hey, Prince, watch me putt. Huh? Oh yeah, that's great. I didn't even swing the club yet, ugh. Sorry, hey, Pretzel. It's Gritzel. Do you know the girl I was dancing with the other night? Nah. -uh. Do you know her? What girl? I didn't see a girl. I have to find her. I must see her again. Oops. Heads up. Hey, do I know you? Eek, the prince, what do I do? Play it cool, Cinderella. Play it cool. Uh, no, not me, mate. You must have me confused with someone else. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Okay, gotta go. That couldn't have been. Or could it? Great, just great. I blew it. Uh, Cinderella had really, really, really wanted to talk to the prince, but she panicked. She was sure the prince would just see her in rags and reject her. I mean, princes like princesses, right? Right? So that settles it. I cannot let him know that this is the real me. Hey, Cinderella. Oh, what? Uh, who's that? <laughs> Cinda who? <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Beeswax. You got news about my dad? We're getting real close to cracking the case, kid. I got one of my best guys following a pirate ship as we speak. That's great. Oh, what are you doing here? Official palace business. I can't discuss it. But between you and me, the prince has got a crush. Oh, yeah? I mean, sure. Whatever, that's cool. <laughs> Who is it? That's classified, kid. But get this, he doesn't know her name. Go on. Says she showed up at the ball and then she just ran off. Go figure, he thought she'd be here today. But when she didn't show, he called me. So like, what did he say about this girl? I can't really discuss it cause I'm a private eye, the key word being private, but he says she's super cool. Yeah. And really funny. Yeah. And a fabulous dancer. She sounds great. <laughs> yeah, but she said she'd be here and she didn't show. Kinda rude if you ask me. Oh. I'm sure she has a really good reason. <laughs> we'll see. The prince is a good fella. Hate to see him get his heart broken. Well, gotta get back to work. She could be anywhere. She could be right under my nose. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> well, the good news is the prince obviously totally likes me. Woohoo! <laughs> the bad news is I have absolutely no idea what to do. Several days passed and Cinderella had not heard any news about the prince and his mystery girl. 
She tried to come up with a plan. Maybe I, no. Well, what if I, no, that won't work. Oh, I got it. I could, uh, no. Cinderella, I need a pedicure. Right now? Yes, now. Me too. Haven't you heard? The prince is going around to every house in the queendom to find his dream girl. Say what now? He has the shoe, and supposedly he's going to marry whoever fits into it. So like, our feet need to look good. Yeah, we need prince-worthy tootsies. The prince is coming here? <laughs> yeah. And one of us is going to become a princess. Yeah. Me. No way. Me. 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 This Me. is going to be interesting. Me. 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 Cinderella was so nervous. The prince was coming to her house. Oh, man. Fairy godmother, if there was ever a time when you need to help a sister out, it's now. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? She tried rubbing a lamp. What? It worked for Aladdin. She tried wishing on a falling star. No stars. Shoot. And finally, Cinderella tried to conjure her fairy godmother with a magical spell. Flippity, floppity, blob, blurpity, black, madgagis, fairieth, godmothereth, cometh now! If. She's here! Yay! Hello! Official royal business! Open up! Oh no! The prince is here! Let me try on that shoe. Me first! No, me! One at a time, ladies! One at a time! Hi, Princey! Remember me? Sure, yeah. Hi, Pretzel. It's Gritzel. Uh, looks like it doesn't fit. Sure it does. Perfect. I've never worn such a comfortably fitted shoe. And there are no other ladies in the house? No. Nada. No siree, Bob. Wait a second. Doesn't Cinderella live here? Cinder who? Never heard of her. There's another girl here? Please, fetch her at once. Your Highness, the other girl was not at the ball. I can promise you that. She lives in a barn. She's totally yuck. Nah, she's a lovely girl. I'll get it for you, Prince. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Mr. Beeswax. The Prince wants you to try on a shoe. He's still after that mystery girl. Oh, I can't go out there. I know you weren't at the ball, but it'll just take a minute and it'll make the prince happy. No, like, I really can't go out there. I'm a mess, beeswax. <gasps> what Unga said is true. I'm totally yuck. <laughs> what? You're a cutie. Come on. Okay. Now I really, really, really wish I had my fairy godmother. Uh, nothing? Come on! Hey, you look awfully familiar. Yeah? <laughs> I'm, um, uh, supposed to try on a shoe? Try not to stink it up. Well, what do you know? It fits! It's you! O-M-G! No way! Your Highness, I assure you, she was not at the ball! Well, actually, I was. <laughs> Super long story, but I really wanted to go and you wouldn't let me. But then my fairy godmother showed up and oh yeah, apparently I have a fairy godmother. <laughs> anyway, she showed up, waved around her magic wand and I got a dress and shoes, these shoes. Well, the other one's in the barn, but <laughs> anywho, then I went to the ball and I met the prince. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> fairy godmother? There's no such thing as a fairy godmother. Sorry I'm late, Cinderella, but your fairy godmother is at your service. <gasps> Where were you? I needed you. I'm so, so, so sorry, honey. I've been at a fairy magic conference and these trolls crashed the party and it was just a huge old mess. Anyway, what's up? Oh, that's the prince over there. <gasps> oh, he's cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a mess. But they made me try on the shoe, and of course it fit. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good thing. But now he knows I'm not a princess. This is terrible. Ahem, Cinderella, can you tell us what's going on, please? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, well, um, this is my fairy godmother. I'm fairy godmother, this is everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. How you doing? Hello. And now, with a wave of my magic wand, I will transform Raggedy Ragamuffin Cinderella here into a beautiful princess. Finally. <laughs> Wait. Huh? You don't have to change a thing. Cinderella, I like you for you. You do? Ew. You don't need a fancy dress or shoes or... Um, 
hold up. Uh, that's really nice and everything, but if my fairy godmother wants to hook me up with some new duds, then I'm a letter. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Okay, fairy godmother, work your magic. Bloopity blabadoo. I'll grab the other shoe later. <laughs> now me. No, my turn. Sorry, girls. A fairy godmother can only have one fairy goddaughter. No, no fair. fair. They'll get over it. <laughs> so it was you the whole time, huh? Right under my nose. Oh, don't worry. You're still my favorite private investigator. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. With all the shoe trying on, hubbub, I forgot to tell you. We found your dad. You did? Yeah, my guy called me this morning. He's on the ship of Pirate Krusty Beard. Well, what are we standing around here for? Let's go rescue Cinderella's dad from the pirates. Arg! What are you doing on my ship? We're here to save my dad, you crusty old pirate. Well, you don't have to be rude. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my girl. Dad! Who are you guys? Harvey Beeswax, private eye. I'm her fairy godmother. I'm the prince, and may I just say, I like your daughter, sir. Long story. <laughs> no time for stories. It's time for you to walk the plank. Ah, pirates! I almost forgot. <laughs> Allow me. Zippity, zamaboo, ta ta, and bye bye. Yay! Okay, let's pause for a second because you're probably thinking this day couldn't get any better, right? I mean, the prince found me, my fairy godmother finally showed up and gave me some new princessy clothes, and now my dad had been rescued from the pirates. Talk about a good day. <laughs> but then it got even better. Get this, when we got home, Beeswax put my evil stepmother in the slammer. Turns out, she hired the pirates to take my dad. So evil, right? Anyway, it was pretty much everybody lives happily ever after fairy tale kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, and we decided to let my stepsisters stick around, but they were a lot nicer now that I was a close personal friend of the prince. <laughs> they even started doing their share of the chores. Amazing, I knew there would be a happy ending. That's not the end of story time. Click right over here to watch more and be sure to subscribe so you never miss an adventure.